Wars, which focuses on four people who frequent the Midnight Bell pub and the way in which their stories interconnect. There's the bar staff, Bob and Ella, the rather unnerving Mr Eccles, and Jenny, who comes in off the streets. Join them now to hear of their passions, hope and despair as we enter the engaging world of 20,000 streets paved with pathos and comedy, wasted dreams and lost desires. Twenty Thousand Streets Under the Sky by Patrick Hamilton Dramatised for radio in three parts by Frederick Bradnam With Stephen Pacey as Bob Annette Badland as Ella Emily Morgan as Jenny and John Moffat as Ernest Eccles Part One The Midnight Bell The action of the play takes place in London in 1927 20,000 streets under the sky. Well, Bob. Well, Wella. So we're brushing our hair, are we? What's the time? Five to five. We've five minutes. That will have to do for me shoes. What did you do all afternoon? Me? I stayed in. Did you ever sleep? Perhaps I did a bit. I bet you did after all those drinks. <laughs> what drinks? <laughs> you know. If this was my public house, I'd have had you sent out of the bar. I wasn't drunk. Was I? You weren't far off. I thought you was giving up drink. Oh, I can't help it if they buy them for me, can I? The penalties of popularity. Yeah, if they gave me tips instead, it'd be talking. Give me your jacket. Oh. Do I look all right? You'll do. Come on. Let's get a move on. Yeah, right. Have you ever noticed, Ella? Notice what? This pub's a bit creepy when it's not open. Things sort of seem to creep around. Go on, I've not noticed. It's your imagination. Did you hear Mr Henderson in the lounge telling his friend why it's called a midnight bell? Because they used to ring it at midnight for time. No, I didn't hear what he was saying. Well, he said it was because the old night watchman in those days always rang the bell at midnight. What for? To wake everyone up? <laughs> That's what his friend said. <laughs> Not even the governor knows why it's so called. How's your head? What do you mean? On me shoulders. You hold it as if it might fall off. Yeah, I've got a bit of an headache, I must admit. Let it teach you a lesson. And open the door for a lady. Can't see one. See the barmaid. <coughs> Ow, my head! Couple of minutes to opening time. I'd better get things ready for the rush. Yeah, and I'd better give the lounge fire a bit of a poke. Evening, Bob. Evening, Governor. All right, Ella? Yes, thank you, sir. Or is the evening news, young Bob? You want to read? Oh, Tom. That Charles Lindbergh's reckoning on flying back to New York from Paris. Ooh, rather him than me. It says that Johnny Weissmuller has swum 100 yards in 51 seconds. Well, faster than I could run it. <laughs> Five past five on the clock, time to open up. Oh, that was a cold night by the feel of it. I'll be down later. Don't get run over by the rush. <laughs> you know, Bob, when you see the saloon bar empty like, you'd never believe it could get filled to bursting. Hmm. When it's empty, I reckon the ghosts of all the old drinkers turn up. They don't order, though, do they? <laughs> no, sign the pledge. Not like the rest of them living here in north of Oxford Street, by the look of it. <laughs> oh, here's someone who hasn't. Good evening to you, Ella. Good evening, Mr... Your usual, is it? Yes, uh, half a pint of bitter, thank you. There's quite a nip in the air tonight, isn't there? What? Yes. Autumnal, of course. Change, Mr. Uh... Oh. Hmm. Uh, by the bay, 
I don't think you'll know my name yet, do you? No. No, I don't believe I do. <clears throat> what is it, Mr. River? What is it? Well, I hope you know. Yes, I believe I have a card here somewhere. As a matter of fact, um, here, oh, here we are. Ta, I usually get to know the regulars' names after a while. Mr. Ernest Eccles. Mm. I'll remember that. No, 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 keep the card. I have plenty. You've been coming here regularly for the last few weeks, haven't you? What? Weeks? Yes, yes, I have. I thought so. Oh, well. Oh, well, what? What do you mean, Mr. Eccles? Oh, well, what? Just, oh, well, what? What? I'm afraid I don't know what you mean, Mr. Eccles. What were you thinking of when you said, with a sigh, oh, well? I don't think I was thinking of anything in particular. Bob, what are you doing? Reading the paper. Do you want something? No, doesn't matter. Are you interested in the theatre at all, Ella? The theatre? I like to go to the theatre, yes. Mm, I had a reason for asking. Had you? I've had two seats given me. Lucky you. I was wondering if you'd like one of them. Would you like one of them? One of what, Mr Eccles? Theatre seats. To go with me. To the theatre. Oh, I see. Thank you. It's ever so kind of you, but I can't just take an evening off to go to the theatre, you see. The tickets are for a matinee in the afternoon. I'm only off in the afternoon from about three to five, when we open up again, Mr Eccles. But you have a half day off on a Thursday, don't you? Yes, I, I do, but uh, usually I'm busy then. What? Busy? Oh, there you are. These tickets are for Thursday. For Thursday. This coming Thursday, in fact. This Thursday. I, I'm afraid I have to go somewhere this Thursday. Can't you put off going somewhere this Thursday? I don't know. It would be difficult. Oh, but not impossible. I'm not sure. Oh, dear. I don't know. Bob, what do you think? What do I think about what? Mr Eccles has been very kind and asked me if I'd like to go to the theatre with him. Oh, very kind. You're in luck. What's the show, Mr Eccles? It's called The Lost Guard, I believe, after the Empress. Yeah, I read about it in the paper. They said it was very good. Well, there you are. So, will you come? I was going over to Pimlico, Bob, as it's Thursday. You can go to your mum's any Thursday. Yes, that's true. It's most kind of you, Mr Eccles. I'll enjoy going with you very much. Oh. Evening, Ella. Here we are. Evening, Eccles. Oh, good evening to you. What are you having, Mr Wall? Your usual? Your brute is paying, yes, Ella. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I won on a Gigi. Oh. Two pints of draft bass, Ella. Two pints bass. Uh, what about you, Bob? Uh, too early for me, sir. Thanks all the oh. same. And uh, you, Echo? Oh, thank you. I'll have a half a bit higher with the plate And in a glass. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, lovely. <laughs> Evening, Ella. Evening, Bob. Haven't you? Wolfsey and old Brooksy. Hey. What are you going to have, Doris? I'll be a devil and have a gin and lime. Oh, it's on me, Oris. Uh, gin and lime, Ella, please. Come in up. <laughs> A couple of Martell brandies, Ella, please. Martells? What's the time, Bob? I haven't had a chance to look. Uh, just gone nine. Yeah. All right, sweetheart. Yes, they're fine. I'm looking after them. I've put a couple of sixpences in the change, in case any of them are feeling generous. You're a brick, Ella, Tom. Excuse me, madam. Oh, my sir. Yes, this time of year, a couple of tarts, by the look of them. Have to rest their feet somewhere. Well, usually they lie down. <laughs> <laughs> like to sit down, miss? Miss? Yeah, I must sit down. Yeah, we'll sit here, then. What can I get you? Uh, I'll have a bottle of Guinness. What are you going to have, Jenny? Don't know. Something to take off the pain. My friend Jenny's not feeling very well. What is it? Pain? Sort of indigestion? Yeah, could be like that. Why not try gin and peppermint? That's good, is it, for the ingestion? Nothing like it. Well, I'll take your advice and have a gin and pep then. Won't be a tick. Gin and pep, Port McGuinness. Good looker, isn't he? Mm, 
He's got nice eyes. That man we saw at the pictures the other night is like him. What was his name? Antonio Marino, wasn't it? Yeah, and he ain't half like him, ain't he? Only not so soppy like. Ooh, that barmaid don't approve of us, dear. <laughs> she can do the other thing then, can't she? Do you think he's Italian, Prue? Antonio Moreno is. Of course he is. No, the waiter. No, never. Perhaps Irish. Excuse me, sir. Thank you, sir. Oh, he's coming back. Here we are, miss. A bottle of Guinness and a gin and pep. Thanks ever so. Hey, keep the change, will you? Oh, thank very much. That'll make you feel better, miss. You'll see. Oh, I'm sure it will. Bob, two double heads for the moment. Right, sir. Two double heads coming up. Oh, I've got to be off in five minutes. I oh, know, you said. You're going to stay here? Oh, don't see why not. The waiter, Bobby's called. He'll keep an eye on you. As long as he don't try to have me thrown out. No, not him. See the way he looks at you. Hello. You've been left on your own, I see. My friend Prunella had to go. Do you mind? No, no, of course not. How's the gin and pep? Oh, very nice, thanks. I'm feeling much better already. Good old gin and pep. I sometimes get these attacks like. Funny they are. Now, yeah. do you get enough exercise? What? Physical jerks in the morning, you mean? Oh, I don't know about them, but what about fresh air and long walks? I get a lot of walking one way or another. Oh, sorry, I, I didn't mean to be funny. And I guess I've got to do some more tonight. You've got to? You ask my landlady, she'll tell you. What, you're short of the rent, are you? You bet. And I don't feel too good, neither. You ought to be in bed. You bet I should. Oh, oh I... <laughs> Look, Have another gin and pep, eh? Why not? That first one did me good. Yeah, of course it did. I'll get you another. I'll, hold on. What's the order, Bob? Gin and pep, please, Ella. I'm surprised at you, Bob. Talking to that prostitute. Same as anyone else, isn't she? No, Bob. She isn't. No. No, she's a lot prettier. Excuse me, sir. Mind your back, madam. Last orders, ladies and gentlemen. Last orders, please. Come along now, let's have your glasses, sir. Here we are. Drink it up. Oh, thanks. Eight and sixpence. No, no, you're short anyway. It's only a question of eight and sixpence, but she won't wait. Drink up, darling. Eight and six? Let me, let me give it to you. Oh, don't be daft. You haven't got it to throw away. Oh, I've got more than you think. Oh, no, I can't. I've got to be quick. You can pay me back when you can, if you like. What? Well, tomorrow? I, I could tomorrow? I won't give it to you here. Finish your drink and wait for me outside. I'll slip out as soon as I can. I've got the money on me. Drink up, please, madam! Port and lemon, hay, uh, and bottle of bass. Three and eleven pence. Your lady friend is leaving, I see, Bob. Yeah, so I see. Well, not surprising, it's almost time. Guinness, half a mile, Johnny Walker. You might collect a few glasses, Bob. Right, back in a jiffy. I'm over here. Good. Must be quick. Here's the doings. Ten shilling note. Hang on to it. Go on. Oh, right. Thanks ever so. Your name's Jenny, isn't it? Yeah. And you're Bob, ain't you? Give me your hand, Bob. Yeah, I must get back. I'll come and pay you back tomorrow. I will. Honest. About nine, I'll come in. No need for that. When you like, we'll do. No, tomorrow, about nine. Oh, I must go back. They'll notice. Good night, Jenny. Good night, Bob. I won't forget. Tomorrow. Time, please, madams and sirs. Time, please. Don't forget what I said. Give us a kiss. Good night, Bob. There you are, darling. I've got to have a drink the outside of Oxford Street. Oh, dear. Shut that. Good night, 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 Good
Wanna ask you, Stanley? What? Wanna ask me, Stanley, sir? Uh, all, all eagles have up. What's that, sir? Come on, I'll help you to the door. All, all eagles have yeah, so Keep moving, sir. In the sight of God, yeah, we're all equal in the sight of God, sir. Why does everybody stop? Oh! oh steady now, sir. Keep going. Why does everybody damn stop? Anyway, so where are the world, sir? Good night, sir. Where is the world? Good night. I'll up, yeah, you do that, Bob. If I've been down this time of night, I don't straighten out till morning. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. We could lose about ooh, five stone oh, between us. But we won't. <laughs> Come on, love. No, no, Bob. Good night, Ella. Good night, Ella. Good night, Bob. Good night. Good night. I'll turn the main lights off, Ella. I like it when it's only the bar lights on. They suit you, Ella, them lights do. Do they? I haven't all that much to wash out. I'll give you a hand. Funny old night. It takes all sorts. Oh, you put his card up, I see. Mr Ernest Eccles. He's taken a liking to you, he has. Glad someone has. Even if it's an old man. Not all that old, he ain't. About 50, well kept. All he wants is a girl to go to the theatre with. For company. But not any old girl. Young girl, I mean. Cheeky. <laughs> What about your company this evening? What do you mean, my company? You know. That young prostitute. You wouldn't believe she was if you'd seen her close. I saw what she was like. She's beautiful. Really beautiful. And sort of like a child, you know, innocent looking. You have paid attention to her, haven't you? Uh, you're down on her luck. How's the rent? Did you give it to her? It's the sort of thing you'd do, I know you. No, I felt sorry for her, that's all. She really took you in, didn't she? Probably never see her again, will I? If you want to, she'll be easy enough to find, won't she? I'll leave off about her. Now, what about you and Mr Eccles, then? What about us? Does it make you jealous? I'll be daft. Yeah, that was daft to me. After the matinee, he'll take you out to tea, I hope. Now you're being daft. Tea? Why not dinner too? <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> oh, there you are, Ella. Have you been waiting long? No, I'm I was... I'm a bit off the time, I'm afraid. No, I enjoyed watching the people. Uh, quarter past, well, not so bad. You said between. We'll get over that. What do you mean, Mr Eccles? What? Mean? Never mind. Let's be getting on, shall we? Uh, we cross here. Keep an eye on the traffic. No! I think they try to run one over. <laughs> Do you know this part of the West End well, Mr Eccles? It's the uh, the playgirl's part. Yes and no. I shouldn't have been late, but for that infernal girl. She was about half an hour late with lunch. You have a girl to... What? Girl? Yes. Oh, I can't stand on punctuality, can you? Well, I think we should always try to be punctual. Exactly. That girl, I had to hurry. Yeah. Oh, now, cross here. The theatre is just up there. There we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, there! I can see it. The paper recommended the play very highly yesterday. Oh. Well, in plenty of time, after all. <laughs> it ought to be a good show. But, of course, one can't always go by what the press says. Right, we're nearly there. They've uh, recently redecorated this foyer. It was powder blue with pink. Do you like the red and gold? It's a bit vulgar to my way of thinking. What? Oh, I can't stand for that. The people here aren't vulgar in the least, are they? No, they're very... respectable and serious. Serious? Hmm, an air of expectancy is what you mean, I think. Yes, probably it is. Up those stairs, we're dressed, sir. After you, Ella. <laughs> well, well, that was pretty good, wasn't it? It was wonderful. Yes, it was worth the trouble. I should think so. And I'm ever so grateful to you. Never mind about that. But I am. The question is, where are we going to have tea? Yes, tea would be nice. Uh, there's an express dairy just around the corner. Do you mind those places? Expresses? No, I often use them. Mm, they're all right if you just want a cup of tea. 
We'll settle somewhere nice for dinner later. Dinner? Oh, I don't know. What? What? What don't you know? Uh, just a pot of tea for two, thank you. Pot of tea for two. Uh, slovenly creature. Are you sure you won't have anything else? No, thanks. I never can eat anything at tea time. I thought we'd go to the Coventry Street Corner House for our dinner. Thank you, but you shouldn't. I mean, to say everything is so expensive nowadays. I agree it is. Unless one has looked into the matter. Looked into the matter? What? Yes. Looked into the matter. In what way have you looked into the matter, Mr. Records? What? What way? Well, the truth is... I've got something comfortably put by. Oh, I see. Investments. Deposits. You're free for dinner, I take it? Yes, I am, but... But what about you? What about me? Haven't you got to get back? What? Me get back? Why should I have to get back? <laughs> I'm a bachelor gay, you know. And there are advantages. Yes. I'm sure there must be. Not that it's all advantages. Oh, dear, no. Nothing to eat. Joe, really? I've, I've a good mind. She's a poor creature, Mr. Eccles. Shall I be mother? Uh, yes. No, show up for me. No, I always thought that you beautiful young people like to stuff yourselves with pastries. I hope it's not too weak. What? Weak? Uh, no, 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 just right. What do you say to that? Sorry? To what? Pastries. Beautiful young people. Oh, you mean what you said about them stuffing themselves with pastries? I don't know. Do they? And what about you? It's a different matter with me, isn't it? The young and beautiful who don't like pastries. I don't know about them. But you must know about them. Why must I, Mr. Eccles? Because you must. You must know. I don't like pastries, to be honest. Uh, there you are, then. You don't like pastries. You are the exception to prove the rule. No, Mr. Eccles, I'm not. Because I'm not beautiful. What? Not? That, Ella, is a matter of opinion. Hmm. It was a wonderful play, wasn't it? I don't know when I've enjoyed a play so much. So you really liked it, did you? Ever so much. Good. Well, we'll have a lot of that. I thought we'd have a stroll after here. That would be nice. They're on to the corner house. What? <laughs> they have a small orchestra downstairs which plays the sort of music I enjoy. Uh, two of your special cocktails and the soup, followed by lobster newburn. That will do to be going on with. Yes, sir. I'll bring the cocktails at once. Mr. Eccles, you really ought not to. Not to what? What? I was thinking of the expense. But worth it. And as I said, I've a little something comfortably put by. Do you live in then? Well, I'm living in Chiswick at the moment, but I don't fancy I shall be there much longer. Chiswick is a very nice part of the world, isn't it? Is it? You live there, you must know. No what? Oh, yes, yes, it is, I believe. I've never been there myself. I have my sister in law staying with me at present. Your brother's wife? Relations can be very trying. But these army people are often like that. Army people? Are they? Awful at times. Your cocktails, sir? Thank you. Yes, uh, here. I'll bring the soup in a moment, sir. Now, see what you make of this, Ella. <laughs> mm. Oh, it's got quite a taste, hasn't it? It has. We should have a lot of this. Were you in the army, Mr. Eccles? No. No, I wasn't, as a matter of... Fact. I thought perhaps... I must say, I'm looking forward to the soup. Yes. I'm feeling quite hungry now. A 
Am I lonely, Mr. Eccles? Are you? Yes, sometimes. Not all the time, though. Like most people. Mm, sometimes one does get lonely. It can't be helped. But you don't get lonely, do you? What, me? What do you think? I shouldn't think you get lonely. Would you, um, would you care for a cigarette, Ella? I don't usually, but after such a lovely meal. Hmm. Thank you. Uh, what are you looking for? Uh, what? Looking? Um, yeah, later. Oh, got it. Thank you. Uh. Hmm. They're Turkish, aren't they? I believe so. Loneliness. That's the problem. Yes, I suppose it is. Why did you think I asked you to come out with me today? I don't know. Why did you? Your brandy, sir. Cognac. Thank you. Thank you, sir. You are sure you won't have one? No, really not. Thank you. I've drunk more than I ever do, except at Christmas. Mm. <laughs> Why did you invite me today, Mr. Eccles? What? Why? Well, I suppose it was because I took to you. Did you? As I said, I did. I was very pleased to come anyway. And you do sometimes suffer from loneliness? Yes, at times. Don't we all? <laughs> we are in the same boat, Ella. Are we? Are we? We are. But surely you've lots of friends. Friends? Oh, yes, friends everywhere. But friends always want you for something. Do they? What sort of things do you mean? Money, or if they're unwell, got nothing to do. Oh, believe me, friends can be tiresome. What about your friends? What about yourself? Tell me about yourself. There's nothing to tell, really. Oh, I'm sure there is. Must be. What? No affaire de coeur? I don't know what those are. Affairs of the heart. Oh, I see. Love affairs, flirtations. No, not at present. Then, um, are we just waiting for Mr. Wright to come along? I don't think so, Mr. Eccles. I haven't thought about it, really. What? Not? Oh, there must be someone. Come now. No, there isn't. Not at present. But we mustn't have that. What do you mean, mustn't? I have my reasons. <laughs> You're a little devil, you know. I don't know what you mean. Don't you? You do. A little devil. <laughs> I'd like to squeeze you, you know. Well, you can't hear, Mr. Eccles. What about that young fellow in that bar of yours? Do you mean Bob? Yes, that's him, Bob. He's a good-looking young fellow, don't you agree? Yes, Bob is good-looking. I do agree. He must have the ladies after him quite often, what? I don't know, Mr. Eccles. Bob's life is his own. So, there's nothing between you? We're good friends. But Bob isn't interested in me. And you? Are you? Am I what, Mr. Eccles? Are you interested in him? No, of course not. Will you see me to my bus? What? Bus? Yes. Are you tired? I am, rather. But it's been a lovely day. Oh, we must have more of that. Uh, waitress, my bill, please. But you're a fascinating little devil, you know. Fascinating. <laughs> Whatever you say, I'd like to squeeze you, you know. Yesterday, did you? The show was very good. You got back late, didn't you? And tired out. We had tea, then a walk, then dinner. Oh, he's got money to throw around then. <laughs> he calls it something comfortably put by, with a sort of smile, you know. Yeah, I noticed he often smiles to himself, standing at the bar, sort of self-satisfied. 
Has he got a wife, did he say? He said he was a bachelor gay. Yeah, that adds. What about work? Didn't say. I only know he lives in Chiswick, has his sister-in-law staying with him, and some of his family are army, but not him. He's taking a liking to you, all right. But next time he takes you out, you find out about him. Next time? That's unlikely. He was a bit pie-eyed by the time I wanted to leave. Oh, yeah? Got fresh, did he? He called me a fascinating little devil. Said he wanted to squeeze me. He didn't. <laughs> he did. <laughs> me, a little devil. A fascinating. <laughs> He's an odd one, is Mr Eccles. There's something I can't put my finger on about him. I suppose he is a bit odd. He will say what in front of what he's about to say. As if, as if he hasn't heard you. Or if he has, you haven't made any sense. What, like talking to himself? Yes, it is. I'd say if you ask me that he's caught up in himself and he's a bit lonely and now and again he wants a woman's company. That's all. Uh, but he likes you though, Ella. Perhaps. But do I like him? My half day off today? I know. What are you going to do? Paint the town red? That's it. No, I might go to the pictures, though. Might have a walk round, have the odd drink here or there. You won't go looking for that prostitute, will you? Her? Uh, no, nah, forgotten about her until you said. Hello, dear. Would you like a nice time? No, thanks. Here, hold on. Oh, if you like, dear. Weren't you in the Midnight Bell with Ginny? Of course, you're Bob the Waiter. Yeah. You gave her gin a bit. That's right. Lent her the rent too, she told me. Oh, gave it her, not lent it. Oh, she took a fancy to you, she did. I'll give over. I want to see her, though. She, she was down Shaftesbury Avenue ten minutes ago. Oh, Tarpanella. Good luck. Hey, nothing like hope, is there? Jenny! Jenny, here! Hello, Anson. Oh, it's you. Yeah, me, Bob from the Bell. It's nice to see you again, Bob. Oh, glad I met you, Jenny. Are you all right? All right? Oh, yeah. I ain't had any more pains. Why don't you come and have a drink with me? Yeah, why not? That'd be nice. I was going to call in your pub this evening and give you the ten shilling bag. Ten shilling? What ten shillings? Nasty looking devil we just passed is a plain clothes copper. He got me fined ten pounds the other week. He won't touch you now, will he? No, he saw you pick me up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there's a nice little pub round the corner. They got a pianola in the room upstairs. Oh, I like music, Bob. you're thinking of your past. This music does. I don't want to get thinking of that, thank you. Can't be so bad. Your past. Well, it ain't good, that's for sure. Oh, I must give you that ten shilling. What ten shilling? Yeah, you lent it me. Put it away. Now go on, take it. No, go it. on, put it away. Now go on, take it. No, I don't need it. I've got money in a bank. So you keep it. Now go on. Well, I will then. But I'm sure I don't know how to thank you. Nothing to thank me for. Don't know why you're so good to me. Because you're lovely, that's why. Don't say that. Now let me buy you a drink, Bob. No, I wouldn't hear of it. But you bought two already. Same again, is it? Port and lemon? Yeah, ta. Port and lemon, half a mile, please, huh? Oh, get some pennies in the change, Bob, for the oh, pianola. Half a mile. Two, one and nine. There you go. Two, Bob. Drink this change, sir. Thanks. Do you want to put the penny in? Oh, yeah, please. I like doing that. Oh, there. Ain't that nice? Yeah. Oh, thanks, Bob. You are a dear. No, I ain't. <clears throat> I like a drink now and again, don't you? Now and again, don't do no harm. I'd like to know what your girl would think of you now if she saw you in here with me. My girl? What girl? I ain't got no girl. Oh, I 
bet you have. And I expect she's just the opposite of me. What's just the opposite of you, Jenny? Dark and brown eyed and a nice straight nose. And I bet she's a nice straight girl too. Why, ain't you nice and straight? Oh, I hardly give that impression, do I, dear? I don't see what's wrong with you. There's heaps wrong with me. And you know it. Still, I ain't got no girl. What about the barmaid at the bell? Ah, she's straight all right, and a brick. But not my sort. She'd look after you, she would. What, darn socks and things? That's right. And she wouldn't be able to see me anymore. She'd scratch my eyes out. So, you'll have to be my temporary girl, won't you? I ain't never much more than temporary, I guess. Don't see why not. I said you're lovely. Loveliest girl I've ever known. And have you known a lot of girls, Bob? <laughs> I was a sailor one time, girl on every port, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I bet. But you ain't got a regular girl now. Honest. Honest? Why you want to know, Jenny? For no reason. I just wondered. You got a regular boy? I don't be daft. I ain't even got a... Someone who protects, you know? Shall I put another penny in the, uh, what's it? Oh, no, I, I, I've got to go. I've got to meet someone. Oh, when do I see you again, then? I don't know. Do you want to? Of course. I asked, didn't I? Well, I'll come in and see you one evening. I'll, I'll come in tomorrow. Is that all right? Yeah, again before the rush. Then we can talk. All right. I'll be in about seven. Oh, right. No, don't come out with me, Bob. Oh, uh, right, well, I'll play a tune for myself then. See you tomorrow, Bob. About seven. Yeah, about seven. Where are you off to then, Ella? Can't you guess, Governor? Thursday afternoon, Pimlico, your mum. God bless her. And my stepfather. Oh, we'll go under the bus with you. With any luck, Mr Pross will be out. He's not one of your favourites, Mr Prosser, is he? Oh, he's not too bad, really. He gets speechless drunk once a week or so. Oh. <laughs> but he doesn't talk to me. Nor to anyone for days on end. When he does, it's only to be sarcastic. I swear that he hasn't had a wash of any sort these last three days, Ella. And he's out half the night and gets in about three, whereupon he fries eggs. Don't go on about him, Mum. No point, is there? He's prosser and that's all there is to it. What about your Mr Eccles, though? The theatre? And tea? And dinner? Dinner? Were you out late? Oh, I know what you're thinking, Mum. But he's behaved. Yes, but what does he want, Ella? Oh, I don't know, do I? Don't know anything about him. Except some of his people are army, and he lives in Chiswick. Army? Chiswick? What does he do, did he say? He doesn't seem to do anything. He says he's got something put by, and he's certainly not short of a shilling. You ought to keep in with him, Ella. It's up to him, Mum, isn't it? <sighs> Mr Pross is back. If he puts his head in... Don't expect a word. He's not speaking today. Hello, stepfather. How are you? There you are. His lips are sealed. Poor mum. I wish I could get you away from here. I wish you could too, Ella. Perhaps things will come out right somehow. I dare say they might. Perhaps you'll be getting married one of these days. There are marriages and marriages, Mum. <laughs> oh, then I know, but you should be thinking of it. I know. I'm 28. At 30, you're on the shelf. Time I left. Here's the usual, Mum. Ah, oh, you're a very good girl, Ella. You really are. Don't you want this letter of yours then, Ella? Letter, Bob? What letter? Came while you was at your mum's. Thanks. I've got the lounge fire to get going again. Just about went out this afternoon. Never does usually. My dear Ella, tomorrow, if you can slip out and meet yours truly, on no account put yourself out, 
I shall be in the main hall of the Coventry Street corner house at 3.45 sharp and will wait five minutes to have tea and a chat. However, if the weather continues to be so bad, I shall not turn up. So make no effort. Au revoir, or do we say cheerio? Yours be sincerely, Ernest Eccles. Got it going again, just in time. Not bad news, was it? No. Puzzling news. From him. From Mr E. Eccles? That's right. What's he done? Proposed marriage? <laughs> yes, next <laughs> Wednesday. At St Paul's Cathedral. Well, who's going to officiate? Bishop of London? He doesn't say. He just wants me to be there sharp at 3.45, if the weather's fine. Whose weather, he doesn't say. You going? If I can find the bridesmaids in my wedding gown. <laughs> He likes his own way, does E. Eccles Esquire, I reckon. Got the fire going, Bob? I have, Governor. Well, it's time to open up. Let the queue outside in. Oh, what's this? A letter. Put under the door. Address to Bob. The midnight bell. It's a lovely coloured envelope. One of your lady admirers, do you think, Bob? Uh, no, it's not one of them. <laughs> I know who it's from. Oh, the missus and me will be down later. It's quite a day for letters. Might be important. Yeah, yeah, it might. No doubt by now you are through with me, as I did not turn up as I said. It was not my fault, dear. If you are not through with me, will you meet me at three? Please excuse pencil and not turning up, yours truly. It's from that prostitute, isn't it? No, of course it isn't. None of my business, of course. You were expecting her to come here the other night, weren't you? From about seven till we got busy, you never stopped watching the door. All right, yes, I was expecting her and she let me down. Third time she's let me down. Now she wants to see me. She says where and when. So perhaps she'll be there. She's a prostitute, Bob. I've done no more than old around, Ella. I believe you. But you can't go on with her sort, Bob. Her life isn't her own, can't be. She'll forever be letting you down and pulling you down. No, I won't let her pull me down, but I've got to go on seeing her. <laughs> She's so lovely, you know, so sort of helpless. So you're helping her, are you? Lending her money, are you? Ten shillings, that's all. I told you, I've 80 quid in the bank. I've been saving me tips. She'll get through your 80 pounds in no time. She ain't asked me for money, I offered it. She was hard up, she said. That's the same as asking, Bob. Perhaps. And you'll see her again, will you? I'll turn up if she asks. She probably won't. I hope she doesn't. I hope in a way Mr Eccles doesn't. But you'll go on seeing him. And I'll go on seeing her. Ever been up here before, Jenny? Up on the east? Of course I have. I've been to the Spaniards and the old bull and bush. <laughs> that's not the Heath, that's the pubs. Come on, cross country. Follow this little path. My ma said she liked Hampstead Heath. Your ma? Mm, she's dead now. Do you remember her? Of course I do. I was 13 when she passed over. What was she like? Was she like you? Not a bit. She was pretty, though. You're not just pretty, Jenny. Am I ugly, then? <laughs> You're beautiful. Really beautiful. Are we going to stand here all day? <laughs> you should have seen me when I was a kid. I wasn't half ugly then. I started to get better looking when I was about 15. I was in service then. Oh, look, Bob. What? See, under them trees. Oh, it's like a place for kids to hide in. Oh, can we sit down there? <laughs> I'll see if it's dry enough. Yeah, it's bone dry by the feel of it. Come on. Oh, the ground ain't half soft. <laughs> Romantic, ain't it? Under the tree and all the bushes round us. I bet lots of lovers have found this spot. Are we lovers then, Bob? I wish I knew, Jenny. I never kissed you, have I? No. I don't think you have. I want to now, though. Go on, then. I ain't stopping you. Oh, I did. 
do love you, Ginny. No, you don't. You couldn't love me. Why couldn't I love you? Because of what I am. I know what you are. You're beautiful. It's what I am besides. It don't matter. I love you, so it don't matter. Oh, yes, it do, Bob. You couldn't love me because I'm a prostitute. That's what I am. A prostitute. You won't always be one, Jenny. And you weren't always one. I'll die one, you bet. No, I wasn't born one. I was born straight, like anyone. How'd it happen, Jenny? How'd you get into it? It started with a glass of port. Did, really. I'd never drunk a thing before. Didn't know one drink from the other. I went out with a friend called Violet one evening. We went to Emma Smith Broadway. Violet wasn't pretty, but she was boy mad. That evening, she picked up a bloke. She knew him before, but pretended she didn't, and he had a friend with him. So, I had to go along with the friend. We went into a pub, and I said I'd have a Guinness. Because it was the only drink I'd ever heard of. But they all laughed. And bought me a port instead. How old were you? 17. Nearly 18. Did you have a job? Of course I did. I was in service. Just got a new job with three old people. Lived out at Chiswick. <laughs> Why'd you smile? No, a girl I know is a funny old gent caught in her who lives at Chiswick. Well, the old gent where I was must have been about 90. And he was stone deaf. <laughs> a retired doctor he was. And his two sisters, Marion and Bella, both about 70-something. Well, they weren't our funny old dears. Marion was the bossy one. Looked like a pug dog, you know, small, bandy-legged. <laughs> <laughs> Bella was opposite like, tall, and always had a red nose and wore great big funny hats. My hours were half eight in the morning till I got them tea about five o'clock. Oh, oh, dratted. Botheration. Bella. Bella. Who calls? What's up? Wake up, will you? Oh. Yes. Hello, Marion. Was I asleep? Yes. And the fire is almost out. Is it? It is. I'll ring for Jenny. No. She'll be getting Robert his tea. We must wait until she comes in. I'll see if I can stir things up. Rouse the dying embers. You're killing the dying embers, Bella. But with kindness, Marion. And I have a touch of dyspepsia. Made a pig of yourself at lunch, as usual. Uh-oh. Uh, pardon. Granted. I've got my head back. Wine at lunch. Two glasses, I warned you. I get my head back every afternoon, wine or no wine. I think I've succeeded in putting the fire out. You have. Well done. Come in. Tea, madam. I've served Dr. Robert. Oh, you're a treasure, Jenny. I second that. Oh, look, the fire's almost out. No, right out. If you serve the tea, madam, I'll get a fire lighter. I never cease to wonder at that girl's beauty. Yes, she is lovely. And that wonderful, slim figure. I find it strange. What is strange? Well, go on. Lovely, well-behaved, quiet, punctual. You'd think that a man would by now... Here we are, madam. <laughs> Fire lighter, a bit of paper, a match. Oh, the coals are still on. That'll soon get it going. There, that's it. Oh, you haven't poured the tea, madam. Shall I do so? Please do, Jenny. That was a scrumptious lunch, Jenny. Where did you learn to cook like that? 
was my aunt taught me most, madam. This is the aunt you still live with? Yes, madam. Ah. My aunt and uncle. And your own parents, Jenny, where are they? Well, my mother died when I was 13, madam. And my father... Well, he sort of vanished, madam. Have you a young man eating his heart out for you? Oh, no, madam, I ain't. haven't. There's bound to be one soon. You're very pretty, you know. Am I, madam? As for young men, madam, I always think that there's plenty of time for that. A sensible girl. What do you get up to in the evenings, Jenny? Get up to, madam? Oh, nothing, I assure you. My sister put it badly. Do you go out with a girlfriend, perhaps? I'll go to the pictures with a girl called Violet sometimes, madam. And are you doing that tonight? I don't know, madam. I'm meeting Violet. We might go. I'd like to go to the pictures one evening, you know, Marion. Well, if there's nothing else, madam, I'll leave the supper things out and then go. No, nothing else, Jenny. See you tomorrow at 8.30. Yes, madam. Tomorrow at half past eight. Good night. Good night, Jenny. See you tomorrow, Jenny. Funny. Thinking of you as a good little skivvy. Weren't so long ago either. There was a chap, though, but I wasn't telling them to about him. Serious, was he? He was an electrician. Had a proper job. It was called Tom. He used to wait for me at the end of the road when I came out about five. You all right, Jen? Oh, I'm all right, Tom. You've been waiting long? About ten minutes. Well, they kept me there asking questions. What sort of questions? Oh, this and that. Come to the pictures tonight, then. Can't. Promise to meet Violet. She ain't no good, is Violet. Violet? What do you mean? You know what I mean, Jen. No, I don't, Tom. She keeps bad company. She don't. How do you know? I've seen her in the pub with older men. Sort of smarmy, undesirable men. Oh, hark at you. Undesirable men. Who are they when they're at home? They hang about after girls. Sort of white slavers. White slavers? The foreigners are white slavers. Violet don't know no white slavers. She may not know what they are, but she knows them. They're bad company, Jen. You ought not to have anything to do with them. Tom was right, of course. They weren't foreigners. But I didn't know nothing then, except that Violet liked blokes. And Tom liked you? He said he loved me. Wanted to marry me. I ought to have married him, had kids, settled down. You could marry me, settled down. Oh, no. Not now, I couldn't. Violet changed all that, that evening. I told you, she knew the two chaps who picked us up at Hammersmith Broadway. But she didn't let on at first. Andy was with her, sort of. Dark, thin, mean-looking was Andy. Common, with yellow teeth. The other one was called Rex Perry, about 30, younger than Andy. He sounded like a gentleman. He was quite good-looking, with a moustache. And he had a motor car. Well, Jenny, here's wishing you. Mm. Mm. Oh, I thought it would taste like medicine. <laughs> it's quite nice, though, really. <laughs> so, take your medicine like a good girl. This is ever such a nice place, ain't it, Andy? It's not bad. It's not bad for Hammersmith, is it, Violet? I thought we'd have a couple here then move on to the West End. Oh, I can't, Rex. I I've got to go. I promised to be back in Camden Town by half past eight. That's all right, Jenny. I'll run you there in the car. You, you got a car? Yes, a Bentley. And I drives it for him. Do you like motoring, Jenny? Well... <laughs> I haven't done much. She ain't done none, like me. <laughs> well, we can go at 60 miles an hour without any bother, Jenny. Let's have another round, shall we? Waiter, over here. Same again. Oh, I don't think I ought to have another. I take no notice of her. I don't know what's going to her. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't take a blind bit of notice of me, Bob. No, they wouldn't. Didn't mean to, ever. It was the car what did it. Violet was right. I'd never been in one. And the thought of riding through London into the West End, I'd hardly ever been to the West End, except through it by bus. 
<laughs> of course. Rex never meant to take me to Camden Town, did he? No. Strikes me they had it all plotted out like. I was innocence itself, I was. And the port was making me feel happy and Gentleman Rex was paying me a lot of attention. Where do you live, Jenny? Camden Town, but I'll be living over Chiswick soon. You have a job there? Mm, of sorts. She's in service and they want her to live in. Mm. I don't know how she sticks to it. Nor do I. Pretty girl like you don't want to be in service. God, no. What does she, Rex? I'd say not. Seems an awful waste. Well, what's wrong with service? You've got to live, ain't you? Yes, you've got to live, but it ain't no way to live for a beautiful girl like you. Don't see what that's got to do with it. Even if I was beautiful, which I'm not. But you are, Jenny. Let me assure you, you're beautiful. Oh, you are, Jen. Everyone can see that. What would you suggest I do, then? <laughs> what would we suggest for you? Yeah, well, what? Go on. Tell me. I'd say you should be... a mannequin. A mannequin? Wearing dresses to show them off. Well, that's what mannequins do, ain't it? And you did that, Jen? Well, just about. Being a mannequin, though, was the first step down the rosy path to being a prostitute. In part one of 20,000 Streets Under the Sky by Patrick Hamilton, dramatized for radio in three parts by Frederick Bradnam, Stephen Pacey played Bob, Annette Badland, Ella, Emily Morgan, Jenny, and John Moffat, Ernest Eccles. Prunella was played by Elizabeth Mansfield, Violet, Alice Arnold, Rex, Christopher Good, Andy, David Googe, Tom, Paul Downing, Marion, Margot Boyd, Bella, Joan Matheson, Ella's mother, Anna Cropper, the governor of the Midnight Bell, David King, Mrs. Governor, Joe Kendall. Other parts were played by Vincent Brimble, Brian Miller, and Joan Walker. 20,000 Streets Under the Sky is directed by Glyn Dearman. do you make of the rather, shall we say, eccentric bachelor gay, as Mr Eccles describes himself? What? Let's find out how the story develops as Jenny tells of her fall from grace and Mr Eccles may explain his feelings for Ella. What? Tomorrow at the same time. This is BBC Radio 4 Extra. Extra.